Hey everybody, we just wanted to start a vlog recently because of the current situation and kind of update you more about what Midstory is doing. Right now is actually Giving Tuesday and we thought, you know, what better day to start vlogging for you guys and for you guys to hear what Midstory is up to. We've been doing a lot and uh, COVID has been affecting all the organizations here in Toledo but across the world and, you know, we hope everybody is doing all right. I have a really exciting week, got some questions from our viewers, 10 questions that we want to, well, give me a second. Hey Alex, shower, wash your hands. We good, clean? Yeah. All right. So we got 10 questions from our viewers and let me set this down on a tripod. All right, so where was I? 10 questions, that's right. A lot of people wanted to know kind of us personally, and you know, I think this is a really good way for us to share kind of our story and our backgrounds. My team actually hasn't seen these 10 questions before, so hopefully we get some really interesting candid answers from them. Logan Ruth, we got a film. Can you guys, on Wait, that what? side, just sit on that side, on the piano bench. We're gonna do a recording session. For what? Yeah, they have no idea. What do you, just sit, don't worry about it. This is called Med Story Home Edition. All right. You guys ready to answer some questions? <laughs> Can we know them beforehand? No, you guys can't know them beforehand. I'm gonna take notes. No, you can't take notes. <laughs> Who wants to take number question number one? <laughs> I think Ruth should take question number one. All right, one. Ruth, you got question number one. What were you doing before you started Mid Story? I was in Boston working at an affordable housing firm, architect architecture design, uh, in a small um, suburb. I guess you would call it Somerville outside of Boston. But yeah, that was what I was doing. And I had just finished my architecture degree at Harvard prior to that, so. Alex? Okay. I was, uh, well, I graduated around 2017 from MIT. So then for a while I was going to like different internships, but I was also considering potentially going to graduate school. Grad school. In what field? Uh, biological engineering of okay. some sort. Yeah. Logan? I had recently graduated uh, from Princeton and comparative literature, normal track route is grad school, but I also had worked in journalism a little bit. Mm. Uh, so I had freelanced for some in the New York area and also New Jersey. So I was considering yeah. that too. And I was actually in Boston and I was working in a prison education nonprofit, uh, managing tutoring resources for around seven to eight different correctional facilities on the East Coast. So question number Two. I'm sure a lot of people are curious. People have asked us, what is it really like starting a nonprofit in Northwest Ohio? Mm. Ruth? Well, the first thing we heard was that there's an oversaturation of nonprofits in the area. And for me, I mean, I had no idea even what a nonprofit was really. I mean, an architecture, not typically nonprofit. So I, I would say that it's been challenging, uh, especially because number one, I, everybody would agree that there are many, many nonprofits, way more than uh, what a city our size usually has. I think for me, it was starting a nonprofit. It was, it was definitely new. I mean, I worked in the nonprofit sector for a while, um, but starting one is a, is a new experience for sure, and filled with challenges. And I think the biggest is sustainability and, and how, to, how do we figure out a way to get the right message and still, still create the things that we want to create or produce the things that we want to produce. Um, so I think that was a big challenge, kind of navigating the, the whole landscape and environment of Northwest Ohio and how we kind of, kind of can get the mission out there. Alex, what, what's some thoughts? Mm. And I, I would say like, at least the, it's been really equipping, I think, and just like this process of going through and starting this nonprofit with all of you, because I think through the coronavirus, I think our mission has morphed a lot more mm -hmm. yeah. and we're trying to really provide services that can People really help. Need. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. During this time. I remember literally like getting, we got books <laughs> from the library on yeah. like basically 501c3 for dummies because we're all yeah. from relatively like science or liberal arts backgrounds. Well, this is new. I mean, there's a ton of paperwork too involved <laughs> with nonprofits. Like, I mean, I think very few people know exactly how much work goes into like the administrative end. Oh, and there's so much work in like the bureaucratic type thing. Yeah. Not yeah. to mention IRS, the work and, and yep. the impact that we're making in the programs that we do and the stuff we create. Yep. On to the next question. Uh, what was your most proud moment of 2019? Alex, you start. 
I believe I would the say, proudest moment. Oh, sorry. Okay, oh. grammar. Sorry. <laughs> grammar oh, no. Nazi over here. It's, it's terrible. Okay, sorry. Restart. <laughs> That's okay. The gala we pulled off in August was definitely one of the highest moments I felt. Yeah, and if you guys don't know, in 2019, we held a gala and expo. So we basically, we took over the entire downtown train station, which is currently pretty much unused. And we invited over a thousand community members in. It was a public event. Um, and had over 80 exhibitors, like community organizations, businesses who were able to kind of, that was the expo part. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and then there were other like exhibits of public art. There were uh, a sort of car show. Um, and that was also the culmination of all of our summer projects. So, I mean, we had students come in from all over the U.S. I think, I guess I'll segue into my own answer, which is I think the summer program that we held with our college students, um, because also I worked pretty directly with them throughout the whole summer. Uh, was an incredibly proud, prolonged moment, mm -hmm. showing them what Toledo is and also dreaming about what Toledo could be and having th these bright minds work on some of our issues and even some of the problems yeah, that we face in the city. Yeah, I would agree with Alex and, and, and also with Logan in that, you know, really the whole summer was a, pr was a proud moment for us. And uh, it was the same idea. It was, it was about space that were created in the mind for these young people to perceive Northwest Ohio in a different light. And it was also about space in reality and physical space and architecture at the train station where we reimagined using, you know, history, using our creativity, using our imagination, making it come to life, you know, in a city like Toledo. So, I mean, that, I mean, we were really able to hit those two points last summer. And I think that kind of helped us push our mission forward as well. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. I guess I don't have a proudest moment but I want to say that, you know, proud to be working with such a great team. And I think I'm saying that because out of experience, um, you know, I don't think uh, even we could have dreamt to have such a great team here locally in Northwest Ohio. Not to mention like a huge group of volunteers yeah. and Absolutely. people yes. who contributed. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. If it was just us, we would probably punch yeah. each other's heads off. <laughs> that like, really had a lot of hope. Yeah, we've had a lot of dedicated yeah. individuals and group of people yes. that have become, I mean, they're family to us, yep. you know, yes. for sure. Yep. And, yeah. and I know there's been a lot, but what was the single biggest challenge that you've had in the last year? You know, as we've discovered the need of our community more, we're also figuring out how to best communicate and educate on the need and also how we fill that need. And what's interesting about this time during COVID is that in some ways it's really exposed the need more, which is, you know, when right. we are all stuck in our houses, when we're not able to go out and do the physical things or like go out and just purchase physical things mm -hmm. or meet people physically, you know, we're relying more and more on mm -hmm. what it means to be informed, what it means to have people who are interpreters mm -hmm and who are telling those stories. We're trying to do a lot for even just like four people, even with volunteers. How, to, how can we provide and maintain like consistent content mm -hmm. on the website? How yep. can we provide even like the layout of our plans for the summer? I think for there's a definitely a toll physically on us, but I think the, the main challenge is usually like how to maintain that drive and inspiration, like Logan was saying, to continue to pursue and fulfill the need, even given all the challenges that are surrounding it. Sometimes it feels like there's a disconnect between like the high vision and the, the service and the work that we're doing and like the on the ground nitty gritty, mm -hmm. like I'm literally <laughs> like crafting Facebook <laughs> posts or like organizing our Google Drive folders or, you know, communicating back and forth with students about like funding opportunities. That part is like for us, there's no, there's no separation. Like we don't have people that are doing that. We're doing everything from being inspired yep. and continuing our vision, but also everything on the ground. So th yes. that's such a, that can be a struggle sometimes. Yeah, for me, it's it's how do we continue delivering, you know, the deliverables every every day? You know, that's been a big challenge because we only have four people that are working on this full time, essentially. Uh, we have a great group of volunteer staff, but, you know, for the content, the ideas, um, you know, thankfully we have interns and fellows with us right now that are also producing content, but that's been a big challenge. How is Midstory funded? Basically. 
Yeah, so that we always get this question. Yeah, big um, question. And that's a question <laughs> we asked ourselves when we started. How is Mitch's story funded? Yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, our funding comes from various sources. Um, Not and from our trust funds. And no. Our, no. <laughs> so actually, all that's a good note. Um, so some, you know, for a while when we when we came back home, you know, because we had the opportunity to go out for our education and things like that, and there are certain stereotypes that come along with that. Like if you go to Princeton, you must have been like a trust fund baby, yep. um, which is really ironic because actually all of us came from low income Long. households. Mm -hmm. um, some of us full financial aid yeah, scholarships. Some of us yeah. from immigrant households, um, some of us first generation college students. And fact, yeah. it's actually, it was actually cheaper for us to go to Princeton than it was to go to UT or BGSU, so. You know, in general, we are funded in a number of different ways. Yeah. So, of course, when we held an event like the gala, we had some corporate sponsorships, but for the most part, we're looking at grants, we're looking at public funding, um, fundraising, donations. I mean, really, for some of those monthly donors that we have, yeah. thank you, because yes, those $20 yeah. a month donations that- Or even $5 a month. Or even $5, $5 a month really actually keep us They're going. Huge. How is Mid story dealing with the pandemic. We knew, I think, a little bit ahead that things mm. were going to be things were going to be drastically yeah. changed. And yeah. so, actually, like after we took that time what of was reflection, it like, like after like what February? I mean, like February, mid February. Yeah. Well, actually, yeah. by the end of the year end review, yes. we, yeah, we saw were that people like were coming. Pretty conscious about that. Like, yeah, around it, like sorry. February, yes. And yeah. uh, sorry. Yeah, yeah no, I was just going to say that like it's interesting because I think one thing that we've actually been more productive because of this. Actually, so I yes. think like in some ways we're super limited by COVID, but on the other hand, we've been mm -hmm. incredibly more, more productive. We found ways to continue all of our programming. Yeah. So nothing is canceled. We're still doing the full-time internship and yeah. the high school program, obviously right. all remote, which has flipped everything. Right. So we've yes. been recreating all of our material and our frameworks and our infrastructure in addition to just well it's more focused producing yes. content it's more focused because i mean in normal times you know everything looks the same mm -hmm. but in hard times the things that really need to happen we need to let that happen so i yes. feel like it's actually been a, um, a focusing mm -hmm. time for us to really see what is the mm -hmm. most impactful what keeps you motivated i mean what keeps us motivated i'm sure a lot of people you know i mean we us too you know but mm -hmm. What keeps us motivated to kind of wake up every day and say, hey, I want to I want to work at BitStore. Even though we're locked in here, there's still things going on on the outside world that we can report on. We can think about, we can create creatively introduce to people, because I think as we're creating content, the purpose is also somewhat to serve the people who are at home right now. Yeah, they, might not have anything yeah. to do or need some sort of source of encouragement to make it through this period. Yeah, you know, it wouldn't be truthful to say that. We, we don't have, we have challenges all with inspiration and motivation during this time. But I think one thing, you know, for us is, is realizing that with limitations, I don't know what the saying is, but sometimes with those limitations, you can be more creative and you can really express and really think about and consider and innovate. And I think for us, certainly um, it took a little bit, but I think that's really what we're trying to do. And it's a allowed us to kind of have another engine to kind of continue moving forward with content and different kinds of content, you know, content that we realize that the community is lacking and they want to see. So what is a typical day like for MidStory during quarantine? On what depends, level? On, depends on the deadlines, right? Yeah, there, I guess there's that question's pretty broad, but maybe I can take a stab at it. But I mean, you know, I think we're doing a lot of things at home. If you haven't paid attention to our uh, video podcasts, that's all being filmed and shot at, at home. You know, all of our content is being created at home. so. Uh, I think it depends. Every day is different. Like we have different deadlines, different projects, different stories, different series. We have interns and fellows that are working together with us. And now we have a college internship program that's coming up in the yeah. summer. So it's like curriculum, it's creating programs, it's doing content, it's editing, it's all these things all rolled into one. So it's troubleshooting issues. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then applying for grants and those kind of things that also take a, a, a would, chunk of our time. I would say a key, a key uh, <laughs> characteristic of our work is that like it's never done. <laughs> never like ending. you wake up early, yeah, that's true. you start your work, you keep going through. And I would say you know, it's very <laughs> enjoyable. Like I think because yeah. it's a passion, you know, and there's a mission behind it. I don't think we ever feel like what we're doing is like a, a nine to five work day in a negative sense. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But it's just never done. You know, you get to, you realize, oh, now it's dinner time and we got to eat something. Well, I, I try my best to like manage the, the whole team and we have a group of volunteers yeah. and fellows and stuff. And I, at the last all team meeting, I was like, deadlines, deadlines, deadlines. We got to get our deadlines in because. Well, hey, but you know, the great part about that <laughs> is like, you know, 
it, on the one hand, there's sometimes that like work is just start and finish and it's done. Mm -hmm. um, and that's sometimes a good feeling. But on the other hand, I think because it's ours, you know, because we own this, it's like, yeah. this is our project and it is the community's project that there's always more need. Like, it's not like that stop. If you had one adjective to describe 2019, and this is like, it's, it's like an interview question right now, right? Yeah, I feel interviewed, I feel interrogated. If you had one adjective to describe 2019, what would it be? One adjective, go, Alex Lim. I'm on the spot, I don't know. <laughs> Stumped us all. Okay, it's your question, right? You knew it ahead of time, so you better answer first. All right, fine. My, my one adjective to describe 2019 will be... <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. Struggling. Humbling. Let's let, let, let's start there. I think to me, it was a humbling year, realizing that there's so much more work to be done. There's so much good content, so much good material, history, narratives, stories to be told. And just to realize that we are probably only a fraction of what really needs to be done in this region. Humbling. That's my, that's my adjective. So there you go. From my engineering background, I would say uh, foundational, I feel like. It was our first year doing our summer programming. It was the first year we did the gala. I think just like a lot of firsts for us that really mm -hmm. have sort of, I think, give us a lot of foundation for what we've been doing in 2020, even with the coronavirus. I think without those foundations in 2019, we wouldn't know what to do this year. I would say wayfinding. Wayfinding. Mm. Ooh. Ooh. I don't know what that means. <laughs> <laughs> you know, we're finding our way. I mean, I think it's very similar to this, but it's maybe more, more, more loose. You know, it's more navigational. It's more yeah. experimental. It was more um, trying a lot and trailblazing a little bit, like cutting out your path. So mm -hmm. wayfinding. Okay, I'm gonna come in with the like the worst adjective. All right, um, fun. Which, I, need to, I, I, need, I need to explain it first. So it's probably the most dry adjective. It's really uninspiring. Okay. I'm gonna say efficient. Okay. Um, oh. And there's a reason for that. I think this is so Logan. I feel like it's like absolutely <laughs> Logan. Like that. Anyways. I mean, I really love like being concise and being efficient and being able to um, be at like a maximum output. You know, being able to, because, you know, if you're not efficient, I think it's actually interesting. So Ruth said wayfinding, which is really true. And most of, there's one way to do that. And there's another way to do that. The first way is to just kind of like meander until you find what it is that you're supposed to be doing. But like another way is to squeeze know what you case. want, yeah. you know, mm -hmm. and then being able to find what is the best way for us to do that and squeeze every opportunity mm -hmm. and to work as hard as you can to mm -hmm. get, get what, get what you want for the community, you know, mm -hmm. to be able to, for us to be able to shape ourselves. And so I think on that sense, like in one year, I just, I, I can't, I don't know how we, how we did it or how we can top that. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's it. Hmm. Was that how time? many questions were there? Oh, it was, it was nine questions. <laughs> I thought you said it was 10. Yeah, 10 sounds better. Well, that wraps it up today. I hope you guys enjoy the content and are staying safe and healthy at home. We're going to be trying to do these vlogs around once a month, but you can stay up to date weekly with our email newsletter, The Mid Weekly. The link is in the description and on our website. And if you like today's content, please give us a like and share and also comment below. We really need your support this time more than ever. And please consider donating to Miss Story on a recurring basis, even $5 a month really helps us. We really appreciate it. We want to bring you more content, more information, and more inspiration. And as always, stay home, stay safe, stay healthy, and stay human. We'll see you next time. Thank you.